This week on To the Contrary. First, the Vatican ends its battle with American nuns. Then, Reddit hopes its new hiring policy will help level the wage gap. And motherhood, it's tough work, but is it a job? Bonnie Hervé, welcome to To the Contrary, a discussion of news and social trends from diverse perspectives. Up first, the new pope pipes up on women. A controversial three-year program of Vatican oversight of the main leadership group of U.S. Catholic sisters has come to a curt and unexpected end. The Leadership Conference of Women Religious, which represents the vast majority of America's nuns, was the subject of an investigation launched by Pope Benedict XVI. The nuns were accused of straying from Catholic teaching on subjects such as same-sex marriage, the ordination of women, and abortion. Women Religious is expected to make some small changes, but otherwise stay the course. It's hoped that the Holy See's announcement marks an end to a contentious period for Catholic women in America. So does this uh, signal, Congresswoman Norton, the beginning of the Francis era where women have more stature in the church? Bonnie, I won't call it a revolution, but it is a real departure that I believe is welcomed by Catholics and non-Catholics alike. So I believe for Pope Francis it's about a welcoming tone uh, and he has expressed interest and of course in providing opportunities for women. I think this is one in a series of examples that this Pope has really taken a new look on what it looks like to be a Catholic. Well, I think if you look at this investigation, it maybe didn't need to take them five years to get it to get it done. He said, let's get this concluded and move on. All right, but first of all, I wonder if it has anything to do with that there really are no more young nuns in America. There is. Uh, well, <laughs> actually, they're, they're not be, like I, the numbers that there well, were. Well, but it's 20 changed. But here, can I tell ago. you the ones it's that much, are? It's yeah, I know the most conservative. Uh, right, they're thriving. Are, are, yeah, but they're very small. But it, and whereas there used to be tens and thousands and more And, and many times, nuns. Bonnie, why? Because a lot of these big Catholic families would say, you're going to become a priest and you're going to become a nun. I mean, times have changed. It's even harder to become a, a priest or a nun in today's society that, okay. because of the fact that they're constantly being attacked. Okay, but is Pope that also attacked. a reason why France, Pope Francis, uh, who seems to be friendlier to women and... To gays Pope Francis and, and all, the right. whole shebang. Yeah, seems to be a friendly Is that guy. why he, a friendly guy? <laughs> a man of no, the No, I think that he wants to find the common factor, which is, I think, is what he did with these nuns, which yeah. is he wanted to make sure that we didn't lose the focus of the church, which is that of serving the poor and being merciful. And that, that was the main, uh, I think that's one of the main points he's wanting to touch among all. So he's saying, look, we're not going to change the doctrine on the church on traditional marriage. However, we want a welcoming tone, and we want to know that we love you and we're not going to judge you. And I think at that, with those tones, with that tone, I think that even those that are, you know, what you would call not the <clears throat> practicing Catholics are kind of looking back and saying, wait a second, maybe I can go to back to this church and because I'm feeling welcomed again. And so I think that that's an important message that well, he's you know, Your point about tone is, I think, a very important one. He, this is one of the most polarizing things this church has ever done, to have the women, the nuns, uh, polarized from the, not the priests, <laughs> but from the male hierarchy of the church and with, with terrible accusations. Here is a pope that's been about reconciliation and about finding ways to bring people together. And so he just cut short this most polarized kind of investigation of you people. You people who, who are the ones in the church who minister to the poorest, who, by the way, this pope uh, 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 empathizes with most. Yeah, washes the feet of the poor. Absolutely. Yeah. I am not going to be the one to carry on. Gets them together and look at the tone that comes out when they get together. Republicans and Democrats take notice. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I love it. Uh, well, and I just think, you know, this maybe had been made into a larger thing than it needed to be. Okay. And it's like, look, I mean, basically what had happened was this is a, a group that had had invited speakers that were 
not in line with Catholic do doctrine. You know, the woman, one woman they had speak was a New Age spiritualist. Uh, I understand why if I were a Catholic and I would look at that and go, why are they doing that? They'd given a, a, an award, like an outstanding leader award to a theologian, but who was at odds again with Catholic teaching. And the church basically came in and said, okay, look, it, it's great that you all have this organization, but you can't be sponsoring things like that because it sends out the wrong message and it's not in line. And it sounds like they've come but, to but, agreement but, on that. Okay, they they have so the uh, there's the, going to be a the they're going to have an women approval religious process. are yes. going to stop inviting speakers who they're going to have speakers have, but who are not going to be at odds. They have to have speakers who speak to whether they're cultural issues or theological issues so that you're are saying in line the with women the Catholic religious faith. caved completely to. I don't think it's what, caving if you're a member of the church. Have you ever met a nun? They cave really. <laughs> no, I think it's I think it's an, a reordering of like we understand that was causing a problem and therefore we're not going to. If these are women who are members of the church and they adhere to church teachings, which the Catholic Church requires, then why should they have a problem with that? I don't, you know, I'm not Catholic. I'll just put that out there. I'm not even particularly religious, to be perfectly honest with you. But the, when I when I read about this and I just look at an outsider at this, what I have a problem is the fact that the Catholic Church has this, you know, very heavy-handed approach towards these nuns. Um, yet they looked away for years and continue to look away in terms of their own house when it has to do with the priest and the abusive behaviors of, a priest, of the priest. I mean, you just had a St. Louis Archbishop come out the other day to say something as ridiculous as he didn't even realize that sexual abuse against children was against the law. I think that they need to really reprioritize what they investigate aggressively in that church, and these nuns need to be at the bottom of the list. Well, but I want to ask you, Genevieve, when you have, I mean, look at the American nuns. Look at the pictures mm -hmm. we showed. They're not in habits. Many of them they are. have jobs. They're not working for the church. A lot of them are professors, not mm -hmm. at Catholic universities. Mm -hmm. And there are very few of them. Um, why would the church do something to drive away the few remaining women who are, you know, it's not, well, but and that's again, to suggest Mercy's point, there is one order I, in Tennessee it's somewhere, it's so, Tennessee. Right. right, and, in Michigan and they're and thriving, Maryland. but it's one order, and the, it, and the numbers, you know, there well, used to be not this one many order. people who were nuns, and now it's right. this and, many. Well, right. there's about 57,000, and I think we should be clear that this particular organization represents the people, it has like 1,500 members. So it's what the no, way they, it re no, no, represents they have, the vast majority. Well, they, is what, they say they is represent what the, the National mass, Catholic Reporter said. I know, but if you read the National Catholic Register, you'll get a different story. And the, what they represent, the leaders. So when those leaders say, well, I represent 500 nuns, then they count those 500 nuns in there. Well, those 500 nuns are not all members. This, this is 1,500 member organization. So, uh, but my point is, uh, I think, you know, this is a, an organization that's supposed to be representing women who are working with the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church believes certain things. And if you're going to be a member of the church, and certainly if you're going to be officially related to the church, a priest, a nun, what have you, you have to uphold, I mean, that, they don't make you become a nun or make you become a priest. That is something you volunteer to do. And if you do so, well, you have to uphold the Well, over the ages, the most, as, as Mercy said, you were sent off by your family a lot in of an things, age right. when women now have no a, power right. to object right. it. Now, and but quite now frankly, they do. a lot it's of them, a lot of like in Ireland, the sisters who were, the laundry mm -hmm. sisters, they were captured, essentially, by these nunneries. And, like, they were prisoners. So, but I think I mean, what the Pope a lot is trying has, to and, do... And I'm saying in an era where you don't have anything like that anymore, how intelligent how are you gonna is it encourage? of the, of, you know, like you were saying, how do you change the tone? Aside from this well, situation... Well, I think you're going to But wait, but wait. This Pope has said that he wants to include women more in the hierarchy. And I think you're going to see changes. Of I really do. What, it, what do With you think? With the Curia in see? particular, I think you're going to start seeing more women be, uh, you know, appointed to these more important positions in the church. You know, we're not priests, the, the thing. Never you know, priests, I don't. Right? I, the problem with the priests again, it goes back to the doctrine Jesus. of the church and in the fact that Jesus chose his twelve apostles, but yet it was Mary and Mary Magdalene who played incredible roles in, in his life and were so influential in his life. So I think you're going to see that he, you will see a lot more emphasis of women being in very important roles in the church. This, this, this and, Pope and is an incredible politician. He is gradually bringing his church into the 21st century mm -hmm. and without upsetting, he hopes, well, the and doctrine without of changing, the church. Yeah, and I, think he has to be given, I think he has to be, be given credit for it. When you, you all sit here and, and talk about, well, there are, you know, there really are more nuns than you're saying they are. This is a pope that understands 
they are more Catholics than say Absolutely. they are today. And yes, he wants to expand the number of women who become nuns. He wants to expand the number of Catholics who go to church. He wants to give them a reason to and do I, that. And I think he he's is an doing incredible. That. He is made for his post. And uh, I, as a non-Catholic, I'm right with you. He does something very important. Mm -hmm. He makes non-Catholics really, really like embrace <laughs> yeah. what Christianity must right. really mean. But he's done and it what all without changing and what at all what and what Catholic If I can finish what I was going to say, oh, going and to what Catholicism bed. means, be because as you say, many people read the criticisms of the church here as simply virile and, and anti-Catholic. You will see less of that when we have this pope doing what he's doing. Yeah. All right, let us know what you think. Please follow Amen, me on sister. Twitter at Bonnie Urbe <laughs> and at To The Contrary. From the church to the bank. Praise and criticism this week for Reddit interim CEO Ellen Powell's announcement the company will no longer negotiate salaries for first-time hires. Powell instituted this sea change in hiring practices because she says men tend to negotiate more than women, and women are even penalized sometimes for negotiating. She says the policy addresses the wage gap by taking one's negotiating skills out of the equation. Powell announced the new policy after losing her gender discrimination lawsuit against venture capital firm Kleiner Perkins Caulfield & Byers. I have to say, when this came out last week, I thought she was way more brilliant than <laughs> the lean-in woman uh, who's just advising people to do things gently. This is real change. Will it help eliminate the wage gap? Uh, I don't think so in the long term, but I think she's got a right to have she can convince her board and other folks this is a good idea and they want to try it. We'll see. Experiment with it. But I think what it does is it ends up saying, basically, as opposed to, um, you know, helping women get better at something we're just because and saying basically because they're not as good at that as men are we're just gonna tell men you can't negotiate or and that and even that women are good you can't negotiate and it's also kind of taking freedom away from an employee what if you think you're worth more than what they're offering you she's saying basically too bad this is what we think you're worth and that's it and you don't have any room well, to, what about, to negotiate what about the issue though and I just said I thought it was brilliant yeah, but most disc wage, the wage gap sets in in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and uh, so what does having an equal entry salary do 20 years down the road for these women? Oh, that's a very good question. I mean, you're, you're right. Uh, things really begin to explode the older you get in your, the longer you get in your career. And several things happen as you begin to change to a different job. Uh, you, women sometimes are not only less likely to negotiate, it's not just the issue that women don't have the skills, it's also the fact that oftentimes negotiation is taken against women uh, more than it's taken against men. So We did a story a few months back about a professor at some upstate New York college who asked for more and they rescinded mm -hmm. the job offer. Exactly. So there is wage discrimination period in the workplace. And there are a couple of different ways that you can do it. This is certainly one approach. I think it's creative. I'm in favor of it. But I really want to say that I want more uh, transparency in terms of what individuals are being paid so that individuals can know if their coworker is being paid the same as them. As long as and we have this secrecy, we will always have wage discrimination. And present law doesn't allow that. Exactly. And we can't get the Republicans to support the Pay Paycheck Fairness Act, w which would demand that. But I'm going to cross right off over on the other side of the aisle with my conservative sisters there. Because I don't think that the way to equalize wages is to say everybody has to accept this wage. Who really gains from that management? I don't think that's a progressive. I mean, I'm a Democrat. If I'm going to, if I'm going to say, I do not believe, by the way, that women are less able to negotiate. They, they claim that they are equal to this job, but by the way, the one thing I can do is negotiate for my pay. You can't assert your equality and then not do that. So what we have to do is, we who are women, we who are feminists, we have to say, look, the, the, the way men do it is they do find a way without, without trying to put off the employer to try to indicate why they think they may b deserve a little bit b uh, better than this. I don't think that's going to be taken up, by the way, by employers across the board. You don't think other board. companies are going to follow Absolutely suit. not. No, they're, they're not going, they expect this to be a competitive world. They will look at you in part by whether or not you are willing uh, to talk back to me on something as fundamental to you as your wages. If you're not, 
I'm not sure I can trust you to talk to the people I want you to talk to. So what it has, to, uh, what it says to me is, women, get ready for it, because we're not going to make it easy for you. If you're equal to men in every sense of the world, we're trying to get that job. Start from the moment you sit down and begin to talk to the employer about your pay. Right, and, and, and to that point, I think I would have been more impressed with the CEO if she would have said, all right, ladies, come to my office. We're gonna have a negotiating session. This is how you negotiate a salary. And you mentor these women. And if we if we wanna play with the boys, I, I just think that just saying, oh, we're just not that good enough in the negotiation process. Well, teach me, make me better. And I think I would have been more impressed with that action than going forward with taking away the salary. But my guess is what she would come back and say is, well, we're just playing by the guy's rules. See? So she would say, yeah, maybe they're better at it, but why should we have to go about it that anyway? But the reality is she's taking competition out, period, which is, frankly, like semi well, at the, American. At the, I mean, at, it's like, at the entry level, yes. You know, similarly, people right well, out of college to or your, graduate school or yeah, whatever real level. Yeah, differences she, among people at the entry right. level. Yeah, not everybody showing up is, is equal when they walk into it in terms of the skills they bring or maybe their background and the like. So I don't think just because you have a college degree and this person has a college degree that you're necessarily, I mean, maybe one speaks a foreign language and one doesn't. Maybe one is a better communications professional than the other, and the job requires that. So I just think there's a lot of things that go into it, but I think you made a very good point, which is why only do it there? I mean, on your second and third promotion, do you not have to negotiate? Yeah, why, why is she doing work? it? Is she doing it out of her personal experience? Uh, of course. Well, that is not the way, not the way that's not the way to decide what your workforce right. or, or look at. And again, I repeat, who benefits from this most? She does. That's she has right. the bottom line. That's right. And it, and if she well, will not, get, no, she doesn't really. <laughs> she's in, based she's, in, she's holding second. everybody's salary she's based in at San a Francisco, level. and she's working for a. a te she's running a small seventy-five person tech company that is competing with other and, tech companies. And the going salary for for uh, I was told by a guy who just graduated from Berkeley. Uh, computer sciences school. The going salary for a programmer is 180 grand a year, and so it, you ha she can't af offer less than that, or she won't get the top talent. Good. So but, but I don't think that management necessarily. You uh, I don't think she's lowering everybody's salary. Not everybody. I think she's making sure women make as she much. She is controlling as men. Bonnie, her bottom line, because she it means that some people in what is a very competitive field. Mm -hmm will be held if they want to work for her to that 180 grand. Right. Well, and, and it's interesting because this uh, the CEO of a, it, it was a credit card payment company, Dan Price, out in Seattle. He cut his own pay and gave everyone that seventy thousand dollar salary. Why doesn't she do that? You know, let's you want right. to make it an even playing field. Do well, that. Well, I, 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 got, I, I, like I that bet better. you any amount of money that she ha that he has a lot more than seventy five employees. Oh, <laughs> maybe so, maybe, but, but but I don't know how her company is going to grow. I mean, if you're if you're can get one hundred and eighty guaranteed somewhere, but at these other places you might get two hundred or two ten or something. Exactly. Well, that's what I'm saying. The best whatever, talent's going to go to another. Whatever company. bar she sets, she's going to have to be competitive because otherwise yeah. she won't get them. But we are out of time on this topic. <laughs> now, why one writer believes being a stay-at-home mom is not a job. We've all heard the expression, mothering is the hardest job in the world. It's politically correct to refer to moms as working inside the home. Being a mom is always hard and challenging, but is it a job? A recent opinion piece by a one-time stay-at-home mom takes issue with the idea that motherhood is a career. Liz Pardue Schultz says she understands, quote, a stay-at-homer wanting to validate his or her life by calling it a job, but, she adds, getting to do nothing but raise a person you opted to bring into the world is a privilege. Calling it anything else is ignorant and condescending, end quote. And, of course, she expected negative reaction, and boy, did she get it. <laughs> but my question to you is, with five children and working a lot outside, you know, like a super worker outside the home, do you consider what you do with your kids at home a job? In fact, it's a mul multiple jobs. I can be a nurse one day. I can be a teacher most days. Um, I'm usually a chef as well because I've got to cook for the kids. So, yes, it, I find that it is a job. Is it a rewarding job? Absolutely. Is it a frustrating job many times? Oh, yes. But it, I do believe that it, it, you are dedicating time, work time, physical labor, all of that to me, that's a job. Yes, and all yeah. the time. Okay. And all the time, 24-7. Yeah. Well, let me show you why I uh, say why I think it, 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 it is a job. Legally, it's a job. If she divorces that man or he divorces her, he is going to have to pay her 
uh, as if uh, because of her, quote, job of taking care of those children. And if it makes these women who are working harder sometimes than I am or many of us who work full time uh, understand that that function is appreciated, I don't have any problem with calling it a job. The only thing I have problem with is what you call a thing. Why should it care so? Why should she care so much what it's called? Uh, well, because, I, I thought this because was a, I was like, why, of all the yeah. problems in the world, why why are we stirring up this one? I mean, we could have debate over. You but know, it's but it is an interesting it, social question, mm -hmm. really. Yes, you're right. Why do women who stay at home moms feel like they need to be? Because I think for, well, because I think for a long time they felt as though maybe people thought what you're doing is not as important as somebody who goes to work for eight hours a day or ten but hours is it, a day then outside isn't the home. But is it their job, so to speak, to learn that they have to believe in what they're doing and believe that it isn't as important and not care if their their high school buddy is now CEO of a major corporation? Well, and maybe many of them felt that way, but I don't think there's anything wrong society saying we ought to admire and uphold certain things in society that are good things and stay-at-home moms are one of them they're, and they're raising the next generation of children but, but is we it ought a privilege? To, we ought to honor I mean that. this woman called it uh, a privilege is it a privilege well yeah but you have to be you know Eleanor most of Eleanor's constituents in DC which is you know has is a city with low-income areas mm -hmm. uh, they can't afford that's not a choice right so she's saying if you have the money behind you mm -hmm. whether you inherit it or you you know your your, your spouse partner gives it to you or your spouse if you have a spouse mm -hmm. or your partner or got you know wherever it comes from um is it not a privilege and why do, isn't it seen that way well yeah. let me let me say why i think it's a privilege uh, uh it, it's a privilege and it's a job <laughs> I, I, i'm a member of congress i love my job these women love their jobs, and I, I want to speak as did a Did you love raising your two kids? I did. I, I did. But let, 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 let and, and I didn't have to do it, do it the whole time because I also had a job. But let me say why, as a feminist, I think it's very important. Feminists have tried to say <clears throat> for a very long time, tried to refute the notion that we really preferred people to go to work and people who don't go to work really are, and who, who take care of children really are not what the new feminism is about. Over and over again, we have said it's about choices. Yeah. I respect that choice, and it's just as good a choice as the choice I made. Mm -hmm. well, let's get, c come exactly. on in. I mean, the value is that women have the ability to choose what they want to do with their lives. And of course, being a mother is critically important. I don't care what you call it, a job or a privilege. If we did not have mothers, none of us would be here today. Were you That's ever right. a full-time mom? You have two No, sons. I wasn't. I've been a working mom from day one, but I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't devalue women who have the ability to make that choice because first of all, it's not a choice for everybody. You have to be able to afford to do that in well, some and way. And sometimes you can't And afford. who can do right. it and who want to do it. Right. Why would I say that what I do in terms of bringing in income outside the home is any more important than what the woman does in her home? home 24 7 raising her children it's right. not um, why uh, is it not the same for stay-at-home dads or is it are, do stay -home dads I think they actually I think they have almost a harder time because yeah, they're not sure. as common so it's not like you have necessarily this big ginormous daddy group like you have the mommies group right. so uh, I think it's a little more challenging I think for them to assert oh it's a real job because for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, you know, I think they get us, elevated I think they get elevated why do you though? say yeah. it's a oh, real job for them uh, bec uh, oh, bec <laughs> often because they're not raised how to do it and they have to learn how to do it on the job where many of us, even those of us who were feminists, were not born feminists. We were born with dolls and, and with washing dishes and with, with doing the things you do as a stay-at-home mom. Whereas a, a man who stays at home, I have real respect for, especially if he chooses More to do that. More respect than no, for a woman. No, but if, who stays particularly at home? if he chooses, because it means he respects his his wife and right. he respects his children at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oftentimes, I think they're even elevated because of, even the men who don't stay home with their children full time, when they're just watching their children, people say, they don't "Oh, really he's watch babysitting." Them. I don't know. If he's right. Like, no, you're not babysitting. <laughs> wait, wait. The children. kids are on their own normally. <laughs> Plus, <laughs> they've come into it a little bit late to the game. I mean, we've already had the debate about how important stay-at-home parents are, so as they've come in, it's like, but you know what? Almost whatever job we have, I think you know, it's a privilege for you to serve your constituents and your job. So your job is a privilege and a job. It's a privilege for you to host a TV show. Not everybody gets to do that. You've worked hard at it. But I just think 
to separate all these things out and say, well, this is a career and this isn't and this is a job and this, I just think that's it's well. Is not there helpful. a better word for it, or are there better terms? Well, for there's it? vocation. I mean, it is yeah. a call, you know to a certain extent a calling where you really calling? feel that you are able to shape and influence your children's life and know the time that you have to let them go and grow up and think independently. So I think that yes, I think it's not only a job; it's a vocation, it's a calling, it's it's a, a lifestyle, it's a way of life, and and uh, you know it's it's all a blessing at the same time. Better word for it that you can think of. I think people should be able to choose whichever word they would like to describe their their job or their stay at home parenting, whatever they want to call it. But at the end of the day, full I just time think homemaking. Full time homemaking. I just think there's there's so many more important issues. And I, why somebody was trying to stir the pot with this? I just don't. Yeah, get I'm it. tired of the mommy wars. Yeah, can't we just oh. all respect each other as mothers and as women? Okay, whether you work or whether you stay at home full time, that is it for this edition of To the Contrary. Please follow me on Twitter and visit our website, pbs.org slash to the contrary. And whether you agree or think to the contrary, see you next week. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, because she's getting publicity on it. Well, that's true. Her article is very unhealthy. No, but it was. It was unhealthy.